my name's Erin. I'm a local Canberran. I did a flexible double degree. I studied Japanese and Chinese. And I'm Tim. I'm studying law and international security studies, which is one of ANU's flexible double degrees as well. Um, and I'm from Adelaide. Yeah, we're going to take you through some of the buildings today that belong to the College of Asia and the Pacific. Yeah, so exciting. Enjoy. So the Coons building actually has a really interesting structure seen from above. It's like three hexagons all together, like a honeycomb. And the reason they did that was firstly, because they wanted it to be like a hive of activity with all the different research going on. Cool. Um, and yeah, and secondly, because they wanted places where the researchers could have their own private little enclaves, but also places where they could all gather together. Yeah, and it's just been recently refurbished. So it's looking really, really nice. Lots of new places to study, sit and read a book or chat with your mates. Yeah. We're coming up to one of the tutorial rooms here. Yeah, so this one we're about to enter now is the Wang Gungwu tutorial room. So a lot of people, if you're studying Asian studies or history, you will have a tutorial in a room just like this. But something you should be aware of is that you should always leave 15 minutes to get to your class um, if you've never been there before because these this building can be pretty confusing, yeah, right? Yeah, Definitely got lost here in first year. You. But I'm yeah. sure it's a lot easier to find. Your it is now. now they've the um, yeah, the color of the carpet is different on each floor, so you can't get as confused. But do oh, do be aware. So here we are at the Japanese tatami room, also known as a yukari no ma. Mm. Here we go. Yep. Shoes yep. Gotta take your shoes off. So this is a beautiful room. We've had this for many years. Um, so this is a place where you can go sit and study. There's also some Japanese style activities that are done in here. For example, Japanese reading group usually occurs on a Thursday afternoon. But otherwise, you can just grab a, a zabuton and sit down. Uh, no matter if you're a Japanese student or a different language student or any student, really, you're welcome to sit here yeah. and enjoy the atmosphere. As you can see, it's a it's a beautiful room. Yeah, and you yeah. spent a bit of time in here, the Kabuki Club. I did actually. So yeah. I was in the Kabuki Club for several years uh, during my study. So you can see we've got a couple of our accolades and our materials over there. Nice. That's our um, cargo over there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nice. yeah. Um, so that was Japanese theatre. We did a lot to do with, with this room and, and Japanese at ANU. That's so cool. There's so many cool clubs at ANU. I know. <laughs> so many different things. Yeah, it constantly with. surprises me. So this has been the Tatami Room. So right now, Erin and I are in the Headley Ball Building, uh, which is named after a really important academic in the strategic study space, uh, which is why uh, this building is home to the um, Strategic Defence Studies Centre and the Department of International Relations and all the academics. Um, and a really good coffee shop. Yeah, good and guys. a really good coffee shop. Yeah. Uh, we'll have a look in one of the lecture theatres. Erin and I have both been to some pretty cool lectures here. Yeah, yeah, um, great public lectures. Yeah, and obviously because we're in Canberra, we get all the people from government, Department of Defence, Department of foreign affairs and trade and um, from other areas within government come in here and give great lectures as part yeah. of our courses and embassies yeah everywhere. ambassadors come in here um, it has a great little lecture theater here you know it's very intimate you can talk to the lecturer or whoever's come in to have a chat yeah, yeah. really interesting space to, to study in yeah this is one of the reading rooms in the Headley Ball Building. There's three of them on all the three floors. Uh, we're on the first floor here. Uh, it's a great place to come and meet some of your lecturers um, if you want to talk about an essay or... There's plenty um, to read as well. Yeah, plenty to read. They always put in the latest uh, newspapers and um, journals and um, academic literature that's been often produced by uh, your lecturers that are right here in this building. So right now we're at Menzies Library, which is the main library for the College of Asia and the Pacific. And one of my favourite places to study. Yeah, absolutely. So unlike Chifley Library, for, which is mainly for arts and social science, Menzies Library is a really quiet, um, yeah. peaceful and interesting place to study. And it's got one of the biggest Asian collections in Australia, which we will be showing you very really shortly. Cool. So not only do we have places like this, where it's a beautiful place to study, very nice and well lit with lots of computers, we also have a really fascinating collection of books here. So the floor above us has English language books about the Asia Pacific, and this floor right here has a lot of um, other language material. You've got things in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, uh, Sanskrit, and also here we have our Tibetan scroll collection, Whoa, which yeah. is incredible. This is one of the things that makes uh, the College of Asia Pacific at the ANU really unique. Well, here we are at the Australia Centre for China in the World. 
uh, which was founded a few years ago. And it's one of the leading international institutes for Chinese studies in the world. Also where we both studied Chinese back in first yeah, year. Yeah, back in first year. And we got some nice gardens here, which have a lot of uh, Asian plants. Um, they go with the seasons, so a little bit dry now, but in spring and summer, uh, it's very beautiful down here. Lots of flowers, lots of greenery. Um, and just on the right here, there's a big auditorium in there. Um, and they have lots of cool guest speakers come in. Yeah, public lectures. Public lectures, uh, which Aaron and I love to go to. Mm -hmm. um, I think two years ago, the president of Kiribati was here. Um, she was talking about climate change and how it's affecting her Pacific country, uh, which was really, really cool. Um, but we're heading in to the China in the World building. Here we go. So down here, this is the main foyer. And on the right over there, there's a gallery and they normally have a really cool uh, photo um, presentation on in there or uh, some cool artworks that have come over uh, it's a bit empty at the moment but uh, uh, through here uh, this is where all the offices of all the um, academics who specialize in Chinese related fields are um, and if we go down here there's a really cool uh, dragon so the China in the world building really brings together you know Academics who specialise in cultural language, um, Chinese philosophy, with other geopolitics. Uh, yeah, other areas like trade. geopolitics, trade. Yeah, um, there's a kitchen here. The dragon. Oh, there it is. Very cool. So that's our tour of the buildings of the College of Asia and the Pacific. Um, now we're going to hand over to Denny. Yeah, here you go, Denny. Hey, hello guys, I'm Danny Rawan, I'm PhD student in economics here at Crawford School of Public Policy and I would be taking you for a short tour of the facilities on campus of the Crawford School here. I'm an international student coming from Indonesia and started my study in early 2019 and it will be a nice experience to share with you our campus and all scenery that we have here at Crawford. Okay, now I'm in the Brinda Bella Theatre Room, one of the theatre rooms we have here for lectures and seminars. This one is a small size lecture theatre, and in total we have in this Crawford building about six lecture theatres and about ten small classes a room. We use this for mainly classes and also seminars, and what's so special is that we can also, students, borrow this room if we want to have like sort of student activities or other kind of meeting places yeah we can just tell the administrator if we want to use the room make an appointment and then yeah we can use the room for our activity so on my left it's tutorial rooms on under the with the glass so normally students can use all this room for either studying tutoring or discussion with friends and other fellow students mainly also on the right and yeah normally people are and students are hanging around here to spend time between classes and right here we have our pantry and the kitchen on my left where we can take lunch or grab yeah, some coffee and of course normally there will be some free biscuits and as you can see here oh, free flow of tea, milk, hot chocolate, and coffee. We have many PhD students, and yes, every PhD student, we have our own room. Uh, normally one room, we will share it with two or three students to do all the activities. And because it's a big community, at any given time, normally we have like 150 active PhD students enrolled here at Crowboard. so yeah. You won't be missing anyone here. It's a very big society. And all are well supported, very diverse, from many countries all around Asia, Pacific, Europe, and even Africa. We all have them here. A very big cohort of PhD students, right? I would like to say thank you very much for joining our tour here at College of Asia Pacific. And I want to say that it's a great pleasure to take you for a tour seeing our beautiful campus here and I'm really looking forward to see you here at ANU.